So today, I wanna to talk about perseverance. Ugh. I know most of us probably can't stand hearing this word because frankly, perseverance is boring, frustrating, and very, very difficult. We all know that we should persevere. The problem is, we just don't know how. We've all faced difficult seasons in life, whether it was relational, financial, spiritual, medical, or any other number of areas. And if you think about a time where you were in a difficult season, you probably remember hearing phrases like this quite a bit. When the going gets tough, tough get going. Keep on keeping on. Good things come to those who wait. If you're going through hell, keep going. Persevere till you're in the clear. I don't know if that last one is something people actually say, but you get the point. While all these phrases may be encouraging or motivational in the moment, they actually do very little to solve our problem. They all tell us that we should persevere, but they don't tell us anything about how to persevere. And that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna discover that perseverance is so much more than just buckling down, gritting our teeth, or waiting out the storm. We're gonna dive into scripture, and we're gonna find three steps for how to persevere through even the most difficult seasons of your life. If you listen closely, and if you apply these steps, then I promise you that this process has the potential to change your life. You ready? Let's go! First, let's take a look at Hebrews 6, verses 10 through 12. God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you have shown him as you have helped his people and continue to help them. We want each of you to show this same diligence to the very end so that what you hope for may be fully realized. We do not want you to become lazy, but to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. Here, in this verse, we see that perseverance is a necessary trait if we want to live a life in service to God. And here, we also see our first step in learning how to persevere. It's hidden in verse 12, where it says, imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. The Bible is full of examples of men and women who have persevered through unbelievable trial and hardship. Moses could have easily turned the Israelites around and sent them back to Egypt when they were wandering in the desert and had no food. But he didn't. He persevered and followed God's leading. Joshua could have easily stopped marching around the city of Jericho after six days when the walls hadn't moved and the army had made no progress. But he didn't. He persevered till God had delivered what he promised. Ruth could have easily left Naomi after her husband died, but she didn't. She persevered in her commitment to her family. And Jesus could have easily proved himself in the way that the Pharisees wanted him to, thus avoiding painful crucifixion altogether. But he didn't. He persevered all the way to death on a cross and being raised from the dead three days later. These stories provide us with examples of perseverance that we can model in our lives and in our circumstances. So our first step in how to persevere is imitate what others have done. Now let's move ahead just one book to the book of James, chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work, so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. When we find ourselves in a difficult season that requires perseverance, we often look at it as a negative thing. We say things like, why is God letting this happen to me? Or I've been praying and praying and nothing is getting better. What this verse tells us though, is that a season where perseverance is required for us is actually an incredible opportunity for growth. It's a reminder that God doesn't waste our circumstances, especially our difficult ones. This is the second step in learning how to persevere. Remind yourself of what God is doing. So we've talked about imitating what others have done, 
And we've also talked about reminding ourselves of what God is doing. Now we're on to the third step. And to get to that, we can stay in this same chapter of James. We just have to skip down to verse 12. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial, because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. When I ran my first marathon back in May of 2014, I hit a wall right around mile 24. I hit a point where I literally didn't know if I was gonna be able to finish. Then I remembered the finish line. I pictured myself crossing it. I felt myself hugging Aaron and all of my friends in celebration. I tasted the delicious post-race breakfast that I was gonna devour once I was done. And from that point on, I told myself one thing. With every step you take, you're one step closer to the finish line. This is why I've grown to love perseverance and why I've grown to love this verse. Because not only is perseverance a sign that God is working in you, it's a reminder that with every step you take, you're one step closer to God's promise for you. And that's exactly what step number three is. Remember the finish line. Now your finish line might not be what my finish line was. It might not be a literal finish line. It might be restoration in your marriage or in your parents' marriage. It might be a pregnancy you've been praying for or getting into that dream school or finding that new group of friends. Regardless of what it is though, perseverance is God's key to helping you get there. So next time you find yourself in one of those difficult seasons, Remember that you can do so much more than just waiting out the storm. You can do so much more than just faking it until you make it. You now have a formula that teaches you how to persevere. And these three steps will help you to keep God at the front of your mind. With his help, we can persevere through any trial. Thank you so much for watching this seven minute sermon. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you'll comment below and maybe share a story of something you've persevered through or perhaps even share a prayer request that you have for something you're persevering through right now. We would love to pray for you. And also, if you'll notice, our last couple seven minute sermons have been very how-to oriented. We had how to defeat worry and now we have how to persevere. So my question for you all today is what else do you want to know how to do? Maybe we can help. I don't know. Once again, thank you so much for watching. My name is John. I hope you'll subscribe to our channel. Maybe share the video with your friends. Have a wonderful day. Keep being awesome. This is only a test.